Hi everybody, I'm going to show you how to do this beautiful tree collage today um, that's going to be featured in an Art Healing Hearts auction that Sandra Lett and I put on. It's a virtual art show. We do it on Facebook and you can be a part of this, either a collector or you could be an artist that participates. So many beautiful artists featuring all different kinds of work from jewelry, resin, alcohol inks, um, fluid art, acrylic and oil painting, sculpture. We're really excited to have all these amazing artists. If you want to join our Facebook group at Art Healing Hearts Auction, you can be a part of it. So here's some basic supplies that you're going to need for this project, this collage project, and pretty much any collage project that you want to try. Choose your substrate. For this one, I decided to choose a 12 by 12 canvas panel by Arteza covered with a homemade collage paper gel print. Have you guys seen the gel prints I've been doing? If you haven't, you're missing out because on my channel I've been doing some really pretty ones. And then I'm picking papers that kind of go with those color schemes. So some of those are papers that I've purchased online. Some of them are gel prints that I've made. So the first thing I decided to do was use this Sonatina paper, which is a actual, a real uh, music paper and I found it at Goodwill. So that was a good place to find it. I'm using Liquitex Gel Medium. It's my favorite gel medium so far. Of any of the gel mediums for collage, I love the Liquitex, and this is the gloss version. It's not too glossy either, but it just I just love the way it works. I love the texture of it. And then I just start going to town. One thing about these gel papers, you can kind of put them on a background and it takes away the scary part of starting with a totally blank canvas, which I find one of the most intimidating things is just starting with a blank canvas. You just don't know where to go, especially with collage. I'm not totally familiar uh, with it. I don't feel completely comfortable yet. So um, it really takes away some of that stress and anxiety of starting just from scratch with nothing. So now I'm just really thinking about color. Um, what colors go here with that big fat rose down there? I love that rose and I'm really thinking I want to preserve that rose no matter what I do. So I know I want some other flowers in this piece, and, but at this point I don't have a plan yet. <laughs> it's just more about color. I'm just trying to get some things down on the paper. And then uh, I started playing around with that gold and white pattern paper, and that's when it hit me. I'm going to build a tree. So the tree started coming organically. And one of the reasons why it ended up showing up is because I'm trying to work around that rose. And that's what really led me to the whole idea of the tree, was what could I build some sort of structure or visual element that I could build around the rose so I didn't have to obscure it. Because to me, it's definitely one of the focal points of this piece. So that's where the tree came in. You can see I'm using my little catalyst wedge there. That's a great way to kind of get some of the little wrinkles out, but I like the wrinkles too. I think it adds a lot of texture to the piece. So I like to tear the edges of the paper, which is how I built all of the branches and the trunk and everything. And then I just use some of that Liquitex gel medium and put it down. And that's what I'm doing. I'm just building the tree trunk. So mixed media projects I notice, especially collaging, that just takes a long time. And my camera ended up dying during the next part of this process. But I wanted to still share this with video with you because I thought it was important to see. Off camera, I added a transparent blue acrylic wash, some white gesso. And you can see I add a little bit of stamping right there. I also use some walnut ink just to define the tree a little more and look at the results. <laughs> so I really didn't use, I used a little bit of paper on the bottom. Like I said, I just finger painted the white and just that blue wash. And now I'm getting ready to paint the blossom or to create the blossoms on the tree trunks. I decided to use some of the pre-printed papers that I had to see if I could find some blossoms that would look good and that way I wouldn't have to create them. 
So I started going through the papers just to see what I could find that might be a good color match. And there's the first one, which was a little too Christmassy for this palette, this color palette. And I thought about adding some Zen to it with that little Buddha book of sayings, but decided not to. Here's the second paper, which I think would have worked, but the third one just struck me. It's like cherry blossoms, and I just had that feeling as soon as I saw that paper, even though I'm not really a pink person, that that would look pretty. So I cut out all of the little blossoms and kind of placed where I thought they would go. And it's subtle, you know, it's it's not really bold, but I think that's one thing I kind of like about this whole piece. There's a very soft, uh, natural quality to it. Then I placed them where I thought they should go and added a little bit of that Liquitex over the top. And they stay put nice. You never have to worry about anything going anywhere with that stuff. I had been wanting to add some uh, leaf accents and I thought, well, maybe I could do a little gel print of this leaf cutout that I had. And so I used some rice paper that's uh, just golden fluids and I just was not getting the results. You can see I'm not, I'm trying to use it as a stamp, it's not working. The gel, pr the gel plate left, um, you know, a tree impression, but it looked more like a Christmas tree to me. I was really not, I was trying to get that leaf look. And I just wasn't achieving the look that I wanted to. Although those are cute, and those could be used maybe for a different project. I just want you to see that sometimes, you know, I go through various processes to come to a conclusion. I even tried, that's a, a really thin piece of rice paper to see if I could get in between that cardboard. Um, and it just didn't work out for me. So I had to come up with another solution. I decided to use some indoor spray paint. So first I did a tester. You don't want to necessarily test right on your piece. And I thought, yep, that's going to work because all the fine mist of spray paint will go in between. And so I masked off the areas I didn't want spray painted. And that's just a cream color. And it left the impression of the leaf that I was looking for. And then quickly I wiped away, you know, any extra that I thought was too much. And then I used that same spray paint on a foam stamp and just added a little tiny bit more texture in the same color. The reason I did that was to bring that cream color that I used on the leaf into some other areas of the painting. And then I added some leaves to the branches just using uh, that's just a little bit of uh, a golden fluids acrylic, uh, I believe green gold and another green color, maybe some of that Naples yellow. And I started adding the little leaves to the branches. This is a really subtle touch. Not, like I said, nothing was too intense in this painting. And I decided to extend the grass down over the top of that leaf because I didn't it was just too obvious as it was and so I just used the paper to extend it um, and then over here it's kind of muddy I thought I should add some little flowers and I'll decide to make each one of those little cream colored dots the center of a flower and add the flowers in the color uh, matching that rose so it brings the color of that rose over to the other side of the painting. And I just think it, you know, there's a lot of movement in that, that side of the painting. And it's just, it's a fun little collage. I'm really, I was really pleased with it. Now, one thing I did do, I got these from Arteza. These are amazing. Um, 
just great for mark making. They're little black pens. They come in different assorted sizes and tips. That's a brush tip. That's a small uh, gel tip. This is a chisel tip. And you can see they're all in different millimeters. So it's amazing. Uh, for mark making because you can basically pull them and do all sorts of different marks. And this was the end result of this, <laughs> this piece. I just am so happy with it. And it's just so, for me, for me, it's very whimsical and unplanned, a very soft and delicate, um, but lots of interest and lots of textures and it's fun seeing the musical notes in the background. I'm an, a musician um, by trade and also, you know, I used to play music in college and teach music, so it's just really fun to see this painting come alive. All the different colors and everything. If you like what you see on this channel, please leave a tip. I teach for tips, uh, not for fame <laughs> or anything like that, just for tips. And I love showing you all of the beautiful um, works that I do. And I appreciate each and every one of you shopping in my Amazon shop and leaving donations. This piece, like I said, will be in the Art Healing Hearts auctions. Sandra Lett and I do a virtual art show. Uh, March 17th to 21st, look at all the beautiful pieces that we're gonna have, amazing artists. You can be a part of it by supporting your favorite artists and see some new artists you've never seen before. That's Art Healing Hearts Auctions on Facebook. And that's March 17th through the 21st. Thank you so much, guys. Don't forget to subscribe and hit all notifications so I can make more art videos just for you.